This is part 82 of SQL Server tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to capture deadlock graph using SQL Profiler. To capture the deadlock graph using SQL Profiler, all you have to do is add the deadlock graph event to the trace. Let's look at this in action. I already have SQL Server Management Studio running here. I'm going to click on Tools and select SQL Profiler. Now, we will have to specify the name of the SQL Server and the authentication credentials to connect to the database engine. On the Trace Properties window, on the General tab, I'm going to select the blank template and on Event Selection, I'm going to expand Locks section and select this Deadlock Graph event. And then click the Run button to start a new trace. So the trace is running now. At this point, if we execute the code that's going to cause a deadlock, then the information about that deadlock should be captured by this trace. Let's look at that in action now. I also have two other instances of SQL Server Management Studio running and we have got two transactions here. I'm going to execute part of our first transaction and then part of our second transaction. Followed by that, I'm going to execute the second update statement of our first transaction and finally the second update statement of transaction two. So in a few seconds we should have a deadlock, so we have a deadlock and this transaction is made a deadlock victim, so we get that 1205 error. The other transaction has completed successfully. So the information about this deadlock should have been captured by SQL Profiler. Notice we have the deadlock graph now. The format of data for this graph is actually in XML, so the underlying data for this graph is in XML format. Now, if you want to extract that XML data into a physical file for later analysis, you can do so by clicking on File, Export, Extract SQL Server Events, Extract Deadlock Events. And then you'll have to specify a name for your file. I'm going to call this Deadlock Data. And, uh, you know, the Deadlock XML file have .xtl extension and then you have the option to export each event in a separate file or all events in a single file and then click the save button the underlying XML data should be saved to that physical file so if we go to the folder notice that we have a file with .xtl extension we can open this file using SQL Server Management Studio if you do that the data will be displayed in a graphical format like this but if you want to see the underlying XML data, then you can use any text editor. You can use Visual Studio or you can use a simple text editor like Notepad. Let's actually open this using a Notepad and we should see the underlying XML data. And if you look at this XML data that we have here, it's very similar to the data that we have captured using SQL Server Trace Flag 1222. We discussed how to use the SQL Server Trace Flag 1222 to capture deadlock information in one of our previous video sessions. Notice it has got the same set of three sections. The first section here is the deadlock victim section, and then we have the process list section, followed by that we should have a resource list section. Now let's analyze this deadlock graph. Now the oval on the graph with the blue cross represents the transactions that was chosen as the deadlock victim by SQL Server. So if you look at the graph that we have here, we've got two ovals and two rectangles. First of all, let's format this graph a little so we can see it properly. So I'm actually going to zoom this in a bit. All right, so now we've got two ovals and two rectangles. The ovals represents the processes. Now the oval with the blue cross represent the transaction that was chosen as the deadlock victim. The other oval without the blue cross represents the transaction that completed successfully. So the oval on the graph with the blue cross represents the transaction that was chosen as the deadlock victim by SQL Server. The oval on the graph without blue cross represents the transaction that completed successfully. When you move the mouse pointer over the oval, you can see the SQL code that was running that caused the deadlock. Look at this, when I hover the mouse over, we can see the actual update statement that this process was executing which caused the deadlock to happen. Similarly, when I hover the mouse over, I can see the update statement that this process was executing. 
the OVL symbols represent the process nodes and the process nodes themselves have got a lot of information for example here we have got the server process ID look at this the process ID 57 is the one that is chosen as the deadlock victim and if you look at the SQL Server Management Studio windows here you can see the process ID in the information bar at the bottom notice that 55 this process is 55 whereas this process ID is 57 so within the process ID 57 window we have got that deadlock um, error 1205 that means this is the process ID which is made as the deadlock victim and if you look at the graph look at that process ID 57 is made the deadlock victim and we also have the information about deadlock priority. If you look at these two transactions, we have not explicitly set any deadlock priority using set deadlock priority statement. That means both of these transactions are using the default deadlock priority, which is normal. And for normal uh, deadlock priority, the corresponding integer value is zero. So in both the processes, we should see deadlock priority as zero and we also have log used so basically this represents the transactional log space used if the transaction has done a lot of updates then it would have used a lot of transactional log space that means obviously to roll that transaction back there is a lot of cost involved so in this case what SQL Server is going to do it's going to check the log space used whichever process has got a lesser log space used it's going to choose that process as the deadlock victim so here the log space used is 264 whereas here the log space used is 292 that's the reason why this has selected this process as the deadlock victim the rectangles represent the resource nodes so we also have two rectangles here and both of these rectangles represent the resources that are involved in the deadlock and if you look at that rectangle we have got something called HOBT ID and HOBT stands for heap or binary tree ID the way um, we use this ID is by looking up that ID in sys dot partitions view to find the database object involved in the deadlock so if you look at the graph here we have got HOBT ID so we take that ID and look up that in sys.partitions view and here is the query we have so I'm taking that HOBT ID and looking up that in sys.partitions so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all the columns from sys.partitions and if you look at the columns we have partition ID, object ID, index ID etc. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass this object ID column value to object name function which is going to give us the name of the database object that's involved in the deadlock. So when I execute this notice that table B is the underlying database table that's involved in the deadlock and that's the query that we use. So here the underlying resource is uh, table A and here it is table B because we are using this HOBT ID here right the ID ends with 63488 and that's what we see here so here the underlying table is table B and here the underlying table is table A and we also have the index that's involved so this is the index on table A and this is the index on table B and the arrows represents the type of locks each process has on each resource node so if you look at between these ovals and these rectangles we have arrows so basically if you look at you know the arrow right here so this process 57 is owning this resource that is table B and it has already acquired an exclusive lock so this process is the owner for this resource it has acquired an exclusive lock on table B and if you look at process 57 that kind of makes sense so where do we have this process 57 it is this window and here look at that it's updating table B first so it has already acquired an exclusive lock on that and that's what we see here process 57 has an exclusive lock on table B on the other hand process 55 is updating table A first so it has acquired an exclusive lock on table A whereas this process B I mean process ID 55 is requesting an exclusive lock on 
this resource that is table b similarly process 57 is requesting an exclusive lock on this resource table a so we have a deadlock situation there so the graph is much easier to understand than the raw data thank you for listening and have a great day